to start. Um, so I would like to start by welcoming you all to um, to Vogue Knitting Live, uh, Virtual Knitting Live uh, this afternoon. Uh, well, this evening my time, I think it's probably more like a uh, late morning um, for, for some of you. Um, and, uh, and it's great to be back here. This is my third show. So um, I know that there are a couple of friendly faces out there who I have seen before. So thank you very much for coming back uh, to chat again. I have got some new things to show you today. Um, and um, and for those of you who haven't met Cowgirl Blues before, then I look forward to introducing you to um, to what we do. Uh, yeah, and uh, I have been doing a little bit of prep work on that, and so I am going to start by showing you a, just a very short little video to tell you a little bit about the business and where we came from. Um, also, just to say, please feel free to pop your questions into the chat um, uh, anytime. Um, Karen, thank you very much for that feedback on the, the shipping. Yeah, we've, we've had great results uh, with the shipping. Um, uh, we use DHL and ship worldwide. It is $20 flat rate shipping. Um, and so, so yes, it, it all works very smoothly. Um, so nothing to worry about in terms of your, your yarn traveling a long way to get to you. So I am going to start by sharing my screen with you and I am going to show you a little video about Cowgirl Blues. So, Go. Hello and welcome to Cowgirl Blues. My name is Bridget Henderson and I live in Cape Town in South Africa where our business is based. The Cowgirl Blues name was inspired by this photograph and the Tom Robbins book, Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. We have amazing merino wool in South Africa and we're also the biggest producer of mohair in the world. It seemed like a no brainer to me that instead of exporting all the raw wool, we should be able to add more value to it locally and then export it. So I decided to give it a try. As I started working with wool and crafting again, I discovered that I really loved playing with colour and that my colours uplifted and inspired people. And it's all unfolded from there. We've grown to a team of 11 women and Cowgirl Blues really is a team effort. I'm Cynthia, I'm working in Cowgirl Blues. I'm winding wool to crochet and knitting. Hi, my name is Lucisa. I'm the head dyer. Uh, I did this one. This one is in sweet dreams. It's nice. You must buy more, more, more. Hi, I'm Almery. I manage the online shop and I'm looking forward to receiving all your orders. So buy lots. We're looking forward to showing you our yarns, colors, and projects. So sit back and enjoy the show. So that is just a little bit of an intro to Cowgirl Blues and, and what we're about and an introduction to some of my team. Um, as uh, Karen mentioned, uh, we've had a very tough week at work this week because Wukazi, who worked for us, passed away last weekend um, uh, related to coronavirus. And so it's, it's been a really hard, um, a hard time for us and, and uh, yeah, we've been thinking of her family and, and she's part of our Cargo Blues family and, and yeah, we're trying to uh, figure out how we're going to uh, celebrate her life and, and acknowledge her. So um, yeah, just to, to let you know. Um, and uh, uh, from there, I would like to go through and show you our yarns and some projects that, that we've got, some knit kits and things. And, um, and please just pop any questions that you have into the chat and we will, um, I'll kind of keep an eye on the chat and, and do a little bit of showing you some things on my screen, um, showing you some of the yarns that I have got with me and then taking you through some of these samples and, and some of the, um, the others that are hiding off the, the edge of the screen over here. Um, and, um, and I do appreciate questions and things. Uh, yeah, so please, please feel free to, to ask as we, as we go along. Um, so, I am going to 
share my screen with you again because I have got a little presentation. Um, right, so welcome to Cowgirl Blues. Um, uh, we hand ions and we're based in Cape Town in South Africa and uh, it's uh, we're very close to the tip of the continent of Africa and we get buffeted by storms in, in winter that come from uh, the deep Atlantic um, and howling winds in the summer and, um, and then we have periods of calm and, uh, and beautiful beautiful weather. We've actually had a gorgeous day today. It is technically our winter now, um, although it's a mild, a mild win uh, winter, sort of cold, wet and, and, and damp. Um, but it is a beautiful place to live. And, um, and yes, I live here uh, in Cape Town and that's where we work. Um, we, we are a team business um, and, um, and all of the people who work at Cowgirl Blues are very much part of the team. Um, uh, it's, it is very much a team effort. Um, our yarns uh, that we dye are of two kind of groups. Uh, we use all South African merino wool and mohair. And as I mentioned in the video, we are actually the biggest producer of mohair in the world. And we have very good quality uh, mohair yarns um, and merino yarns as well. Um, what we are really known for is our colours, and we have a colour palette of 30 different semi-solid colours. Uh, semi-solid because they are hand-dyed, so there is a little bit of variation um, in the colours, uh, and um, that colour palette changes. So towards the end of each calendar year, I start thinking about which colours uh, feel a little tired, uh, that perhaps haven't been selling that well, and those will be retired so that we can introduce some new ones, because I don't want a color palette that just kind of expands infinitely. Um, it makes it, it's difficult enough to choose as it is without, without having too big a selection. Um, and uh, I have a color card which, um, which will be a little tricky for you to see if I hold it up in the window there, um, but when I flip out of the slides, I'll show you the card um, of the different solids. And then we also have 10 what we call standard multicolor yarns because also for, um, for the year that these are kind of in season, these colorways are always available. Obviously because they're hand dyed, there is variation from, from batch to batch, but um, but you can always order a sweater quantity of yarn from us and we will dye the batch for you um, for, that, for that project. And I'm gonna take you through uh, all of these in a little bit more detail. Um, so to start with, uh, I'll just take you through the different yarns that we have. Um, I'm gonna show you the slides quickly and then I'll, I'll switch those off and I'll, I'll show you the actual, um, the actual yarns. So we have three different merino yarns. Um, the lightest one is our merino lace single yarn. Um, and in the semi-solid colors, we have that in, uh, in 50 gram balls, uh, wound by Cynthia, who you saw in the little video. And then in the multicolors, we do those in 100 gram skeins, uh, and they run to about 300 meters per 50 grams or 600 meters per 100 grams. Um, and, and in yards, uh, 328 yards or 656 yards approximately. So that's the lace single. Uh, then we have our merino twist yarn, which is um, a four ply or sock weight uh, yarn. And it also comes in 50 gram balls in the solid colors and 100 gram skeins in the multicolors. Um, and uh, if, you know, if you prefer a bigger ball and you're ordering a sweater project, uh, it is very easy for us to, to wind them into 100 gram balls as well, uh, if you prefer. And these ones run to about 150 meters in a 50 gram ball or 300 meters in 100 gram skein. Um, and this is a two ply yarn, so it's two, two strands twisted together in the yarn, but it's the equivalent of a, a four ply weight um, or a sock weight. Um, and then also in our merino, we have got merino DK, um, and that's a standard double knitting weight. Uh, these ones are, are available all in 100 grams. Um, it's about 170 meters or 164 yards in 100 grams, and also available in the solids and in the multicolors. 
And then we also have three mohair blend yarns. So the most popular and the most well-known one is our Kid Mohair Silk blend. And uh, this is 70% Kid Mohair and 30% Silk. And uh, we have the semi-solid colors available in 25 gram balls and the multi-colors available in 50 gram skeins. Um, and those are about 200 and 400 meters approximately um, in the 25 and 50 grams uh, respectively. Uh, then we have our Aran single, um, which is a heavier weight yarn. It's about 120 meters in 100 grams. And this is a blend of 80% uh, merino and 20% kid mohair. And it's a single yarn, so not plied. Um, lovely winter weight yarn. Um, uh, we don't get to wear it that much for sweaters here because it's a little heavy for our climate, um, but, uh, but it is beautiful for, um, for sweater knitting, uh, throws, beanies, um, all sorts of, of different projects. Um, and then the last one in the mohair is our fluffy mohair yarn. And uh, this one is what I would call a sort of double knitting-ish weight. Um, it's about 200 meters or 220 yards per 100 grams. Um, we don't stock the solid, uh, semi-solid colors in this one, but we will dial them to order. Um, and, and obviously we have all of the, um, the uh, multicolors available. Um, and this one, there are a lot of designers in Scandinavia who are using this in, in a number of their projects. And um, uh, it's, it's a lovely yarn to knit both in a very loose gauge, but also in a more standard weight gauge, depending on your climate. Um, so I am going to stop sharing my screen there um, and show you some of those, show you a couple of the, the yarns so that you can actually see them. So they come in these, um, these little people call them yarn cakes. Um, now, I think that you are reading the cowgirl blues backwards. There. No, it looks right to you. Okay, it's just showing mirror to me. Um, thank you very much, Helen, for nodding and letting me know because I'm looking at the screen going, oh, it's backwards. Um, uh, so, Nora, you've asked which weight is comparable to a fingering yarn. Um, so, a fingering is, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, it's about 400 to 500 meters per 100 grams. Is that right? Um, so, this is finer than a fingering, and our merino twist is more towards a sport weight yarn. So if you wanted to reach a true fingering weight, then probably combining this with the kid silk is about is about right. Um, yeah, the, the 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 standard yarns available here just are, are not quite similar, but it's certainly something that um, that we can we can look at and look into if that is is a very popular yarn weight for you. So you can get an idea over there of um, uh, just the, the thickness of the yarn. And um, I mentioned that we have a color card of 30 different colors. So there you can see the greens and blues. Um, the, the one that I was showing you there is Camps Bay, which is uh, this one over here. Um, there you can see some of our reds and pinks, purples. Um, and here, the, um, the neutrals and then um, oranges and, and yellows. Mustard, one of my favorite colors. Um, we have a, a saying at work, which is that mustard fixes everything. Um, so someone has asked what gauge is the fluffy mohair? So it very much depends on how you want it to knit up. Um, and um, I will, I'll get to it in a second and talk more about it um, in a minute. Um, the next one I'm going to show you is our merino twist, and here you can see it in mustard. And so you can see that it's a two-ply yarn, um, uh, sort of a sport weight um, or sock knitting weight, but it is 100% wool. So that's the merino twist. And then in um, the other uh, merino is the merino DK. Uh, so this is a standard double knitting weight. Um, and also available in all of our solid colors. And here you're seeing it in indigo. 
Um, this one you can see on the darker skeins, it gives you an idea of that semi-solid coloring because there is a little bit of variation in the color on that one. Um, so those are our three merino yarns. Um, and uh, I was going to show you the, just to give you an idea. So we have um, the, the solids and the multis available in all of the different, in all of the different weights. Um, so that's the, the lace single, then to give you an idea, um, yeah, the, the, um, the solids and the multis pair very nicely together. And as I go through the multicolors, I'm going to show you some swatches because we've been playing a lot with knitting up um, swatches just to, to play with different colors and things like that. Um, and hello, Cindy, I see you in uh, sitting in front of your Golden Gate Bridge picture. Um, it's nice to see a familiar face. Thank you for coming. Um, so the sec, the, the mohair yarns, this is our, um, our kid silk. Um, and that is a kid mohair and silk blend. Um, and uh, it's, you can see, you get an idea of the, um, of the halo on it. It's a brushed mohair yarn, beautiful um, light yarn to, to knit with. And I'll show you a couple of, of projects when we get to, to that point. So that's the kid silk. Oh, and then you can see um, uh, with one of the multicolors. Um, so 25 gram ball for the solids and uh, a 50 gram skein for the multis. Um, and then the Aran. So here's the Aran single. Um, the solids and the multis come in 100 gram skeins. I'll bring them a little closer. This one over here, the multi is Tainted Love. And then I've got terracotta in my hand here. And then, um, and last but not least, the fluffy mohair. So here you can see, you get an idea of um, just the size of the skeins that we wind these ones a lot, a lot longer, but I'm gonna hold it closer so that you can get an idea of the actual yarn itself. Also a brushed, a brushed yarn. Um, this is 78% kid mohair, 16% wool and uh six percent nylon which is the core that they spin it around um and then you've asked which scandinavian designers are working with it um i'm going to have to put that in my email because off the top of my head um none of the names are coming to mind but i'll put some links into um into some of my emails and and show you um, so then a question about are the prices listed on our website? Yes, they are. So all of our pricing um, on our, for international orders is in US dollars. And uh, the mohair yarns, the kid silk is $14 for the, um, the semi-solid uh, balls and um, $29 for the skeins. The Aran is $20. For the um, for the hundred gram skeins in both the solids and the multis, and the fluffy mohair is twenty six dollars uh, for the hundred gram skeins, and that's about two hundred meters in a hundred gram skein. Um, so for anyone perhaps who wasn't here at the beginning, I'm just going to say that we do have a coupon code, which is BKL August, and that will get you 10% off uh, on everything on our website. And we'll also donate another 10% to um, an organization here called Ladles of Love that is uh, feeding homeless and hungry people um, all around Cape Town. And I think they've provided 7 million meals since um, our lockdown started at the end of March. Um, right, so that was my intro to our different yarns. And uh, um, oh, the code I think is good until the 25th of August. Um, in fact, if you give me two seconds, I'll just double check that for you because I've got it open here. Yes, it's open and it, the code is good until the 25th of August. So uh, if you want to go and look for a pattern and, um, and then come and find some yarn, then you know you don't need to have a panic buying session this, this weekend. Um, you, can, you can always take your time. 
Um, so uh, it, it would be helpful just to get an idea from you. Can I take you through our multicolors and show you the different colorways and then I'll take you through some of the projects that work for everyone? Okay. And so for the multicolors, um, I'll bring my pile of skeins a little closer. Um, with the multicolors, uh, I will show you a couple of skeins um, and then we have also got some swatches to show you how these yarns knit up. So the first one I'm going to show you is called Happy Days. Um, this is the Merino Twist. Here it's in the Aran Single and here it's in the Kid Silk. And this gives you an idea oops, sorry, hold it, of how it knits up. Um, so it, it is a very happy colorway um, with little bits of chili pepper and hot pink and a splash of green. Mm -hmm. We are in the process of uh, putting all of the color elements into the descriptions on the website so that if you're looking to pair it with a solid color, you can get an idea of, of what, um, which ones would go. Um, and then just to show you, so you can also see that um, the colors show up differently on the, um, on the kid's silk over here. Uh, than they do on on the merino yarns and and also on um, on the Aran, which has got more of the merino in it. Um, but they just the kids look just takes the color a little a little differently. <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much for your comment, Tracy, about the fact that you love that we have swatches. Um, I, I have to confess that actually my background is in business. I, I didn't study anything to do with. Uh, yarn or dyeing and I stumbled into this business completely by accident um, and one of the things that I've realized since the beginning and, and the South African market has changed dramatically in the sort of eight or so years that that we've been doing this is so everybody's dyeing yarn now and many people just do it as a little sideline business at home or a solo business and one of the things that's been very important for me is to uh, provide to, to, to create job opportunities for people and to give um, some training and growth opportunities, particularly to women. And, and so I never wanted to just do this on my own. But obviously that gives us a cost structure which is different um, from people who have no overheads and who are dying yarn in their kitchen or in their garden. And, um, and so, so it's been hard to find ways to differentiate. And so knitting the swatches has actually been one of them. Um, I have a lovely Zimbabwean woman uh, working at Cowgirl Blues called Makai, and uh, she is completely self-taught on the knitting machine, just between her and I, and mostly her on YouTube and things. And so she knits all of the color swatches. And what she's been working on this week is um, a series of swatches showing you how the kid silk combines with some of the solid colors. Because a lot of people have been, um, have been asking about that. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm just gonna type the code in again. So it's VKL August, uh, all one word. Sorry, it's put it in as two words there, but it is just all one, all one word. And if you have any issues with the coupon code, just put a note in your order. Your payment all goes through PayPal. And if anything has any issues, we'll just do a refund for you of the discount um, amount uh, once you've, when your order's been placed. So, so please don't worry about that at all. Um, yes, yeah, so, so here you can see Happy Days um, on a couple of different um, solid color backgrounds. Um, so for me, it's always interesting to, to see, um, it says, uh, yeah, so this one is on, the, is the Happy Days with the natural. And then you can see how the different pink um, shades tone the color. And so you lose elements of the color when they're against the same color background and other things pop out. So it's, um, it's different. Um, Robin, sorry, we're going to miss you. I will be back uh, tomorrow and Sunday. And if you pop me a private message with your email address, I can send you a, a link to a YouTube link of the recording and an email with all of the all of the information. So if anyone would like to do that, you're very welcome to. Um, okay, so that is Happy Days. Um, the next one that I'm going to show you is called Cape Carnival. And so there is an idea of the um, the colors uh, and here you can see the skein in the Aran. Let me just bring that forward. 
to give you an idea of the actual yarn. There it is with its color background. Um, and then here you can see the mohair, the fluffy mohair taking the yarn color quite differently um, from the Aran. So that is the Cape Carnival. Um, and yes, I've got a few swatches of that. Again, that show you some of the different uh, color elements. So here you can see it on the natural. Um, here it's with terracotta, with mustard, and with olive. Um, and it's, it's almost difficult to believe that it's the same color yarn, just because you see such different things on those color, color backgrounds. So that's Cape Carnival. And um, that is named for the carnival on the 2nd of January uh, that happens here in Cape Town, where we have um, uh, a parade of uh, marching bands and, um, and minstrels who dress in amazingly colored, um, colorful outfits. And it's, uh, it's, um, it's very bright and cheerful and inspiring. Um, so the next one that I'm going to show you is Tambourine Man. Uh, and here you can see it on the Merino DK and, uh, and on the Kid Silk. And this shows you how it knits. Uh, this one here, the, this swatch over here is on the, um, the merino twist, this one. Um, and it just happened to be a section with not huge amounts of color, but you can see it's a little different on the kids' silk. And then, um, so I'm just going to move someone there. Uh, then this gives you an idea of that uh, tambourine man on different color backgrounds. So again, on the natural, you see the kid silk, um, uh, um, you know, the different colors show up most on the natural, um, or with a slightly contrasted background. So I think this is rainforest and um, air force and hot pink. Um, and yes, using a variegated mohair and a gradient of lace held together can be a beautiful combination um, uh, just depending on which com colors they are, will um, will give you an idea of how they how they combine um, how they combine together. Um, so my, my coochie Mira has um, has appeared to say hi. Um, sorry, so I'm just going to spotlight my video because uh, somehow we got. Um, Project there. Okay, so next up is um, Tainted Love. Uh, and this is largely um, ready pinky tones. Um, the, the swatch there gives you an idea of how it knits. There we go. And then um, all of the background colors were in the sort of pink red spectrum on this one. But again, you can see, you know, if you want, um, if you want a, a stronger look um, and the, color, the, the background color shows up more then a darker background will, um, will dominate versus, um, versus the, the lighter natural with the colors on it. Um, so that is Tainted Love. And then Sweet Dreams. Um, this is the one that Pusiswa was dying in, um, in the, the video. So those two are sweet dreams. So it's got elements of mustard, um, camp space or turquoisey color, a little bit of red. Um, and here you can see a swatch. That's quite a loose gauge knitted in lace. And with this one, what we've done is also just started to put together some solid colors so that you can see how those pair up um, with, the, with the Maltese. Um, so many colors, so little time. They just, uh, I just want to knit swatches and combinations of everything. Um, so, so I've been having fun picking colors and then Makai has been knitting swatches of those. Um, and then with this one, uh, we picked some quite different colors uh, as the background colors. So obviously you can see it on the natural over here. Um, but then paired with the carrot juice, um, which is a bright, bright orange that people often think, oh, you know, what would I put that with? But actually pairing it with something um, uh, that's a subtle, um, a subtle multicolor can be quite nice because it just tones down the solid color a little bit and gives you a little bit of color variation 
the pops. And actually this sweater that I'm knitting, that I'm wearing here, um, uh, I'll show you is a, a pattern by Isabel Kramer um, called Reagan, like the President Ronald Reagan. Um, and this one was knitted with the lace and the kid silk held together. And it gives you, you, you know, you can see it, you get a nice color, um, color variation. So that's Sweet Dreams. Um, and then next up I have True Colors. So True Colors, you can see there, sort of mustardy uh, background. Um, and there is the swatch of just the True Colors. And then here you can see it paired with, um, with the Faded Rose and then also with the Plum. And just get an idea of how those colors uh, sort of change the, um, the shade of it. And then for that one, we've also knitted up um, some swatches and I love how these have turned out. So this was our lemon yellow with the, um, with the true colors over here. What was this one? Uh, this was with the faded rose. So with a slightly more pinky color, it gives you a, a, almost a more browny um, effect. Uh, here it is with the sable and this one is the true colors with the natural. Um, and then uh, in the blues, I have got, um, where's my skin? Um, nine to five, which is, um, which is all blues with dashes of green, a little bit of our rusty orange in there. Um, and there you can see how it knits as a swatch. Uh, and we have, I, I think they've all been loaded. We've put the swatch pictures uh, on the website with the multicolors so that when you're looking at the multicolor, you can then also actually see the swatch of how it knits. Um, and here you can see that the, um, the kid silk is a lot more subtle in the, um, in the swatch. The coloring is more subtle. Um, and then here, uh, is some playing around with with uh, with colors. So on the natural, on some of the blue tones, um, and then with the terracotta here, which is one of the little highlight accent colors um, in the yarn. Uh, I think that the color combination is actually quite beautiful, um, uh, how they blend together. And thank you very much for the feedback on the swatches. I'm glad that you liked them and found them helpful. Um, so next I have got Signs of Spring. So that you can see there, um, and there is the actual yarn. So it's a sort of um, a celadon, a very pale greeny blue background with some accents of green and then little splashes of pink. Um, and here you can see a couple of the solids mixed in with it. So here it is with the natural, it gives you the closest idea of the uh, color with the celadon, with olive, and then with the hot pink. Uh, and then come a chameleon, which is uh, greens. Um, that's my skin. Um, over there, and then swatch in the background. And with this one, um, We've just got some stripe colors to show you. Sorry, the light is, is fading a little bit here as it gets darker this evening. Um, so here it is with, uh, with Camps Bay and then with, with Aubergine. Um, and then uh, the last one is, if I'm allowed to have a favorite child, this might be my favorite. I've got a plan for a, a sleeveless cardigan that I, I want, a sleeveless top that I want to knit um, this weekend. So this is called Under Pressure and it's charcoal grays with a little bit of, um, it's actually a slightly almost like an orange speckle. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, that one gives you an idea of how that one knits over there. Um, <laughs> thanks to me, I'm glad you're liking the Comic Chameleon. And then this is under pressure on some of the solid colors. And I think what's lovely about this one, it gives you an idea of it can actually be quite subtle. Um, so Tracy, you've asked if, uh, if we have any stockists in the US. Um, we have just sent a small order to Jimmy Bean's wool. And um, they are doing, we're doing a pop-up with them in September. Um, I think 
only the solid colors. I'm not 100% sure if we sent the multicolors. Um, and then we have got a store in um, on the East Coast called Magpie Knits, and uh, they have some of our yarns. And I'll put all of this um, uh, in the email that I send. So if you'd like to just drop me a private message with your email address, I'd be happy to, to forward that information out to you. Um, and then we are working on an order of some of the Aran solids at the moment for the Knit House yarns in Southern California. Yeah, so, um, uh, yes, we, we have a few stockers in the US and we're looking to expand that. So if you have any local yarn stores that you think should be carrying our yarns, then definitely let them know or let me know and I'd be happy to, to get in touch with them. Um, and so the next thing I'm going to do is show you some of our kits and samples. Yeah. Um, if you've got questions, we can, um, I don't need to rush off uh, and you're very welcome to stay and, and ask any questions. Um, uh, when you're finished, um, I just have to change the screen a little bit. Um, much. So, uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is this one over here. So, this is our Sunshine Shawl Knit Kit. Um, and it has been very popular. It is knit in our Merino Twist yarn. And the background is Cape Carnival. And then we've done it with, um, uh, yes, so someone asked, is it Magpie in Virginia? Yes, it is. Um, and we've got an order that's waiting to ship to them this week. So we've got some, some they'll have some new stock very soon. Um, so this one is, um, you can see here, it's, um, it's kind of a rainbow of colors. And how we have done the knit kit is to give you different size balls um, of all of the, uh, the colors so that you, you don't have huge yarn wastage and you can get the little hints of colors in. Um, you can see that it's a, you know, it's a generous kind of full size shawl. Um, I think I'm going to send it back away. Um, and you can get an idea of, of how that fits. Ha! Um, Vicky is very happy to know that her local yarn shop has some of our yarns. Um, so yes, this is a nice knit kit. It's a straight garter stitch um, just with the striping and the, um, the decrease and you start on the long edge. So it's a, lovely, um, it's a lovely one for a beginner or someone who wants a relaxed, um, a relaxed project. Um, the next one I'm going to show you here is the pinstripe scarf. So this one, uh, we have, we had it in, um, this was our original colorway. Um, and with uh, some of our new multicolors, we've done a little bit of a pop of color. So the background color here is Tainted Love, which you can see. And um, uh, uh, so someone's asked with the sunshine tool, how close are the amounts to the usage? Um, I don't think that they're too close, but uh, the pattern is very forgiving because um, if, if your gauge is, is very off, um, what you could always do is just, you know, if you dropped one, sorry, I'm too far away. Um, if you were one stripe short over here, you wouldn't notice it in the pattern because there are many different colors. So, um, so it does work. It does work pretty well from, from that perspective. Um, and uh, we haven't had any feedback that anyone's had problems. Um, if any of you out there have the shawl and have tried it and have had a problem, please let me know. Um, the Sunshine Shawl is not at Magpie, but if you, oh, is it? And I think they've got the pinstripe um, shawl, but uh, the box is waiting to ship to them. So if you could always ask them, um, if you sent them a mail this weekend, uh, we could always stick one in for you if you wanted one, um, and we could send it through uh, with, their, with their order. Um, okay, so this, back to the pinstripe scarf. So again, this is a straightforward um, knit with stripes of different colors going through the yarn. Um, it's, you know, you could wear it as a nicely wrapping scarf if it's cold outside, like it is a little bit here in Cape Town this weekend. Um, but it's also a nice lightweight, uh, it's, this is knit in the lace single. 
And so it's also quite nice as a, just a lighter weight, um, sort of more um, summery spring autumn wrap. Um, so that is the pinstripe scarf. Um, and then the next one that I'm going to show you here is our Joys of Spring shawl. So this one, uh, um, uh, I collaborated on the pattern um, uh, with a local knitter, and we had this one in a green, I'm just going to have more, um, in sort of greens and purples, um, which we've, I've re-knitted just a little swatch in the Kama Chameleon, um, uh, which you can see there. Um, but we've done a new color combination. So this is using the True Colors um, mustard background. Again, you can see it's a decent size shawl. Um, it actually scoops a little bit round on the one on the one edge, and um, you know you're going to get a nice wrap. It's a nice light weight because of being mostly um, mostly the mohair, and it's mixed with um, with the lace single. So thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. I love the new color combination. Um, uh, Sarah and Elmarie were absolutely horrified when I suggested that we knit the pink and the green with the, the sort of yellowy background. But I really love how it has, how it's turned out. And it is just a light, a very light um, shawl to wear, but also warm if, you, um, if you're going to mix it up. Um, not, not mix it up, uh, sort of. Uh, um, dare I say, scrunch it up if you were wearing it um, uh, with a with a jacket um, in a wintry climate. Um, and then I've got a few other projects which I'd love to show you. Um, so in terms of kits on the website, um, this is a baby blanket, a beehive baby blanket knit kit. I'm going to bring it a little closer so you can see. It's knit in our um, merino twist uh, with um, the DK here. And if I hold it this way, you can see it's got a little, um, it's got a little bobble stitch detail. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to show that to you over here, uh, which is very nice for little fingers because I have a two month old niece. And so I created this pattern for her. We have it in the pinks in a blue uh, and a sort of bluey green colorway and then also in a neutral naturals colorway which is uh, which is really lovely oh thank you helen we love that you have placed an order um thank you very much um so the next one uh, that i want to show you is um is this is our soft stripe poncho so this one is knit in the aaron the Aran held with the kid's silk, which is, um, I think it's three strands of the kid's silk to balance it up to the Aran weight. And this is just a very relaxed uh, colorway. And um, sorry, so someone's saying, oh, the pink one. So it's not actually a shawl, it's a baby blanket. Um, was it this one here that you were talking about, Karen? Um, so it's actually a baby blanket. Although if you wanted it as a shawl, you could just knit it uh, not so wide and a little bit longer um, to get, to get that um, to get that extra length, uh, or add in a few more colours so that you could extend it a little bit. Um, so that is the beehive baby blanket. Um, what then? I've shown you the poncho. Um, the next one that I want to show you is this one, which is the Kid Silk Cobweb Scarf. Um, and if I bring it up close, sorry, I always find it very difficult to figure out where to show you the little tuck stitch detail uh, there. So you can see here, this little tuck stitch detail, um, which is knit um, across the, the shawl. And this is um, rectangular. Uh, works as a wrap um, and is knit in four colors uh, of our kid silk yarn. Um, that's the kid silk cobweb shawl or cobweb scarf. So I'm gonna put that one on there. So these ones are all available as kits on the website. And if you go into the section, um, as you click into our online shop, um, into the yarns, you'll see 
uh, the kids that come up. Um, and then the, the one, uh, a couple of other patterns I want to show you is, um, this one is a very beautiful, uh, thank you, Cindy, for your uh, lovely feedback. Um, Helen, you've asked, is it one stand of each? So if you, if you mean this one, the, um, the Kinsel Cobweb scarf, it's one ball of each. So it's 100 grams of Kinsel in total, uh, four 25 gram balls, um, one of each one. Um, then one of my favorite jerseys is this one, uh, sweaters, I know, we call them a sweater, um, is this one by Beta Jezik from Hedgehog Fibers. Um, it is called the Le Pouf cardigan. Um, and this one is knit with a fade, um, a fade set. And we've got some beautiful fades on the website. I'll show you a couple of examples here. Um, sorry, excuse the bags, but it was only mine to get them home. So these uh, were, um, these are two new colorways that I dyed up for you this week, um, uh, named after AHA songs. This one is called Stay On These Roads, and this one is called Take On Me. Um, and these have got six times 100 gram skeins uh, of our merino twist which um, depending on the size that, of sweater that you need, this will be uh, sufficient uh, for that. And it's a lovely pattern. It comes in a, um, a pullover version as well. Um, and it's not difficult. It's not a difficult, uh, not a difficult knit. Um, uh, it's not my all time favorite jersey though. My all time favorite jersey um, is this one by Isabel Kramer um, called Reagan. And I wanted to show you um, so it's, uh, I'll show it to you there, you start by knitting this black panel along the back um, and then pick up the stitches all the way around to knit the lace through here and then finish off the sleeves. Um, and you can wear it this way up as well, although I don't, I always wear it with the collar, but my mother always wears her version like this. So this one is knit in the lace single held double with the kid silk. Um, you can also knit it with merino twist, but I want to grab a project that's not quite finished. Um, so, uh, um, my mother and I have been tag teaming a version of it knit with our, um, with one of our lace single, um, fade sets because of the gauge you're knitting it um, with two strands. And so it works very beautifully um, with two of the colors in the back part going into the sleeves and then two of the other colors into the um, into this one over here. Um, and so, so yes, Karen, the, the Raspberry Beret, I mean, if you wanted to do a sweat like this, this was, is an amazing way to do it. Um, if you come back on Sunday, I intend to have it finished. In fact, I might have the sleeves done by tomorrow. But um, uh, yeah, um, uh, thank you. I, I love this. And the weight of this is absolutely gorgeous. I can't even tell you. Um, I, I'm super excited. I love my, um, I love my, uh, um, the version in the lace and the kid silk. But, um, but this is also gorgeous. Um, so... Yes, Karen, now you know. Um, what pattern for under pressure? Um, uh, so, Alison, you're saying beautiful but very short this one. Um, uh, you don't like the shortness of it here. Um, so, one way to fix that would be obviously to, to work on a bigger size where you've got more stitches coming this way. Um, the previous one is this one. Ooh, sorry, I'm now getting stuck in floating balls of wool because there are many of them on that one. Uh, when you said the previous one, did you mean this one, the Lepouf? So with the Lepouf, um, I actually knitted it a size too big, I wish I hadn't. Um, if you wanted to knit it longer, it's knit from the top down. So it's very easy to adjust it and knit it longer. You just need a little bit of extra yarn, um, depending on, your, um, on which size you're doing, uh, so that you can just keep working it down to have it as long as you want, pretty much. Um, so uh, a pattern for under pressure. So I don't have the under pressure knitted up into anything yet. Um, I, 
Uh, again, I'm grabbing another work in progress. Um, I, I cheated and I got Makai to knit me um, a flat piece in the under pressure and um, combined, held double with the, um, with the, 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 the charcoal. Um, because I wanted to work on it as a sort of shrug-like pattern so that, it, you know, it could be sort of joined in there again, work, um, work it slightly longer, yeah, but I just haven't had a chance to finish it. But one of the ideas that I have had, hmm, I don't have it here, um, Petite Knits has got a beautiful uh, design for a sleeveless, um, a sleeveless uh, vest, which we tend to wear a lot, well, I wear a lot here. And so that's one thing I have in mind. Um, uh, a friend lent me a couple of her sweaters. So I don't know if you know Petite Knits, uh, I think she's Danish, um, but this is her Sunday sweater cardigan version. And this is knit in the kid silk. And this one is in faded rose. And that could also be an amazing sweater too. If you like the mohair silk, that could be an amazing one to do um, in the under pressure because it's very subtle or you could combine it. Um, I can't see, I'm just looking here to see how many strands it is held together, but it's at least two, if not three. Um, uh, but that could then work as a lace and, um, and kid silk held together. This one is called the Sunday Sweater. Uh, oh, sorry, I just sent that as a private message and I meant to send it as an everyone. Sunday sweater. Uh, petite. Knits. There we go. Um, and uh, for sleeve, uh, sorry, so someone's saying the name of this pattern. Um, uh, Eileen, you were asking about the name of this one? So this one is the Sunday sweater. Um, how many strands held together? I, I'm not actually sure. Let me look a little closer. So a friend of mine knit this one. Um, I can't tell if it's, I think it's three. I think it's three strands held together for this one. Um, but it is designed for, uh, for, um, for the kids' silk. Uh, is the Sunday sweater, yes, this is the Sunday sweater and this one's knit only with the kids silk yarn. So I'm going to bring it a little closer, if you can see it there. Um, but I suppose there's no reason why instead of uh, one strand of kids silk you couldn't put in a strand of lace um, as well. Um, so, so yes, that, you know, that's a lovely one. Um, and then I've also got this one which I want to show you. So this is a test knit uh, that I did, it was, um, this one is a pattern called Veer, so I'm going to put it in here quickly. Um, so this one is Veer by Eri Tamil on Ravelry. Um, and um, this one is knit in the fluffy mohair. So Veer in Dutch means feather, and um, the pattern is designed with these little floating um, feathers that you can see over here. And it's knit in the flappy mohair. And I then put the contrasting color um, and contrast yarn in. I used the Aran Single with this one. Um, and then because I don't like to waste yarn, I knit my cups in the same Aran and I really like the contrast. Um, I'm very bad at following instructions, so I probably wasn't the world's greatest test knitter because I didn't want one that looked exactly like the pattern I wanted it to look like mine. Um, so, so this is uh, this is this one here. Um, the beautiful wrap behind me, not the striped one, is that this one over here? This one is called the Joys of Spring Shore. So. Um, and uh, thank you for the feedback. I like it as well. And it's very good for the weather that we have at the moment. And it's also in a top down. So you can, you can knit it as long as you wanted it to go. Um, and it's quite wide. Again, I think I was a bit nervous about it being too small, but, um, but it is, 
it is good. Um, uh, Carol, I'm glad you've had a look at Petite Nitz. Yeah, she does have amazing, amazing patterns. She is petite. Um, so I'm curious to try and see how, um, how I like the fit um, of the one that I have in mind. Um, and um, sorry, Nina, you've asked what's the name of the pattern. Do you mean the name of this pattern? This is the one that uh, I think I've written in there. It's Via by Airy TML. Yes, Via, that's the one. Um, uh, so, what was I going to say? Something about something someone asked here. Um, uh, no, I can't remember what it was. Um, uh, Yes, no, I don't know. Sorry, I've lost my train of thought a little bit and I have nowhere, no idea where I am or what I'm talking about. Um, so it's officially uh, six o'clock my time, which is officially the end of the session and you may have somewhere else to go. Um, uh, so if anyone has any questions or they want to have a chat to me about anything, please do pop in the chat or you're very welcome to switch on your sound and talk to me. Um, uh, and if you haven't already and you would like me to send you an email after the session with the YouTube link for the session recording and uh, the reference to all the samples and patterns and things, please send a message. Um, and then when we get to the second part of the session, which is going to be a live session, we'll send you an email. Yes. I talked to Magpie and they're supposed to contact you and get my sunshine shawl. Amazing. I, I will uh, send a message to Elle Marie now and let her know she'll pick it up on Monday morning. So, so thank you very much. And, and I also, I also bought the pinstripe kit that they already have in stock, of course. Fantastic. So, thank you. Are you I going to mail to us what company, what stockists you're going to be using so that we'll have that list? I will. Yes, I'll put it in my email. Great. Yeah, because the yarn is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, yes. Yeah. I bought this. And then I bought that um, the four colors of the pink and all. So it's all going to be wonderful together. I just can't wait to play. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Sorry, someone's. I love your presentation. I beg your pardon. I love your presentation. It's oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's really difficult to know like how to do it and what people want to see and um, how much detail. You do a great job. You do a great job. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, when you go back to your event hub, there is an option to um, to do the complete the survey, survey. something like that, and give some feedback. So please, do, uh, please do let them know. Uh, so I can't wait to get my kits and try them. Yeah, thanks. Um, Audrey, no problem. Uh, I've done a recording of the session, and so I'll put that on YouTube and send it through a link to that and uh, you'll be able to watch it in your own time and speed it up if there are things you don't want to watch um, and uh, and I'll also send uh, in that email I'll just put um, some pictures and links and things like that so you can find some of the different different patterns. Um, uh, Chris thank you very much I'm glad you like the under pressure um, I am going to see if I can finish the sleeves on this tonight and then I will be able to start knitting my sleeveless sweater tomorrow. So even by Sunday evening, there might be something to show you. Um, thank you very much, Mary Beth. The Sunday sweater is not on Ravelry, isn't it? Petite knits, are you sure? Uh, Kuma Carl. Okay, thank you very much for that suggestion. Um, who is the Kuma Carl designed by? If you know, but otherwise I'll, I'll have The a... Sunday cardigan is in Ravelry. Okay. Um, maybe they spelt it wrong, but it's there because I added it to my favorite. So it's there. Okay. Um, I will, um, if you haven't already put your email address, then put it in a private message to me and I'll have a look for the Sunday sweater um, uh, pattern and put a link into the email if I can find it. Yeah, type it in as Sunday Cardigan. Oh, Sunday Cardigan. Sunday Cardigan will show it. Yeah. 
um, yes, yeah, so I haven't knit any of the petite knit sweaters, but a friend of mine knits a lot of them. So I'm going to try the sleeveless one this weekend. And then, um, yeah, knitting this one just made me, I loved how this has got a little bit of the balloon vibe in the sleeve. And so has the, um, uh, so has the, 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 the this, this one. Um, has also got that um, sort of balloon kind of vibe at the edge. And I, I love I love that that look. So I think that it would be very interesting to do. Ah, okay, so Sunday cardigan. That is the one. Um, so yes, I, I, I mean, I don't know, have other people got other questions? Anything else that you want to know? If you have got questions. Thank you. You're so welcome. Um, if you if you have um, if you have questions or you want to drop me an email or anything, uh, obviously I will be back tomorrow and Sunday, uh, and so I can try and pick up on other things. Um, and yes, do just reply to my email and let me know if you have sent your email address. In there. So so yes, I'll forward all of the info out to everyone. Um,